Forum's webinar speaker series. I'm Greg Roman, and I'll be temporarily moderating this discussion today, and we'll have our regular host, Stacey McKenna, who will be back with us next week. We are pleased to have one of the Middle East Forum's writing fellows, Ms. Cynthia Farahat Higgins, join us to discuss Civilization Jihad Operation, the Muslim Brotherhood's successful infiltration of America. Ms. Farahat will speak roughly for five to 10 minutes, then open it up for questions. Should you wish to ask a question, please use the Q&A box located at the bottom of the screen. We will do our best to get to all of the questions that are asked, but since we have many participants in today's webinar, I apologize in advance if we're unable to get to you today. And with that, I turn the discussion over to Cynthia Farahat. Thank you very much, uh, Greg, and uh, thanks to the Middle East Forum for having me today. And I appreciate everyone who is tuned in. I hope you enjoy our talk. Uh, I'm going to try to make it as short as possible. It's a very complicated topic, uh, but I will certainly try. So if I oversimplify things, uh, it's because of the time constraints. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, one of the most uh, important uh, topics uh, regarding our national security. When I say our, I identify with America. Soon I'm going to be an American citizen. Uh, so uh, I, I believe this is uh, one of the utmost uh, importance uh, for the security and safety and future and liberty uh, of this country. Uh, it is one of the most uh, uh, nefarious uh, uh, organizations, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. It was uh, founded in uh, 1928 by Hassan al-Banna. And uh, since the day it was founded, and even before uh, it was founded, it has acted as a terrorist group. And uh, it become ultimately the wellspring of uh, modern Islamic terrorism. Uh, they, it is the group that founded ISIS, is the group founded Al-Qaeda, Al-Jama'a al-Islamiyya, which is Islamic group, Al-Takfir wal-Hijra, which is excommunication and immigration, Tanzim 65, which is the group of 65, uh, the secret apparatus, and Hamas. These are all groups, uh, terrorist groups that were founded, directly founded by uh, members of the Muslim Brotherhood. And uh, I would argue uh, that uh, this is their military wing uh, and it is functioning under ostensibly different banners. So this is the jihadist aspect of their operation. What's much more sinister in my view and has so uh, much uh, more destructive uh, long-term ramifications is what they, the Muslim Brotherhood calls the civilization jihad operation, Amaliya Jihadiya Hadariya. And uh, the term, uh, the origins uh, of this term, we uh, know them uh, from uh, 2004. Uh, when a police officer in Maryland saw a woman wearing Islamic garb and taking pictures of, uh, sorry, taking, oh, she was videotaping the structure of the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. And uh, a police officer decided to conduct a traffic stop. And he discovered that the driver, her husband, was an Islamist uh, called Ismail Al-Barasi. Al-Barasi was detained uh, uh, on an uh, outstanding, uh, outstanding uh, material witness warrant, which was issued in Chicago in relation to a fund, uh, in relation to funding, uh, funding for Hamas. Uh, afterwards, the FBI field office in Washington D.C. executed a search warrant on Al Barasi's residence in Virginia, where they found an incredible amount of Muslim Brotherhood documents in his basement. Among these documents was a very, very, very important one called the uh, titled the Unexplanatory Memorandum uh, discussing the general strategic goals of the group for Northern America. Uh, this document was written in 1991 by the uh, 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 board of directors of the Muslim Brotherhood in North America. Uh, but, but yet they tell you, uh, they have the audacity to tell you there's no Muslim Brotherhood members in America. It's just absolutely mind blowing. Uh, so this document was ultimately approved by uh, the Egyptian uh, advisory uh, Shura Council in Egypt. 
the Brotherhood's Advisory Council. And the document detailed the Muslim Brotherhood's strategic plans for the United States, where they discussed Al Amaliya Al Jihadiya Al Hadariya or the Civilization Jihad operation. They described in excruciating detail their intention to destroy the West from what they call its miserable house from within. Um, and uh, it entailed uh, their operation of infiltration and subversion of every single uh, aspect of Western uh, society uh, from uh, the media, from education systems, so from political, uh, from political entities and organizations, uh, academia, you name it, uh, they're there. Uh, I will only say one example for each of these uh, successes that they had in infiltrating uh, all these bodies and all these organ organs of American society. I'm only going to have one example because of the time constraint. Um, the first of these examples is uh, their success in using US civil rights organizations to compromise significantly and significantly endanger uh, US uh, national security. Uh, there is a group called uh, the Muslim Public Affairs uh, Council, MPAC. It is a Muslim Brotherhood front, front organization, uh, which was founded by uh, two uh, very prominent Muslim Brotherhood leaders. And it's currently also uh, run by an alleged uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, leader uh, called uh, Salama al mariati one example of their huge successes, it happened in June 2018. Uh, MPAC was part of an active coalition for civil rights and civil liberties and immigration groups to push back against immigration and custom enforcement, ICE, uh, uh, for their uh, plan to uh, implement a system of uh, automated social media vetting. Uh, in 2017, ICE began uh, seeking uh, tech companies to develop, uh, to develop an algorithm to come through social media feeds of would-be visa holders. Uh, the objective of this uh, proposed algorithm is to identify individuals considered high risk uh, and identify also those uh, considered positive contributing members of society and generate uh, at least uh, leads, at least 10,000 leads uh, for deportation every single year. This program uh, was uh, run in Arabic and in English. Unfortunately, after uh, the propaganda of uh, MPAC with leftist, uh, radical far leftist uh, uh, groups, uh, we ended, they ended up caving to the pressure and they have suspended their contract proposal seeking companies to build an algorithm for social media vetting. Uh, this is a huge win for the Muslim Brotherhood against the United States and this allows them to funnel uh, jihadists uh, and uh, some of the operatives in a program which and, and destroy a program which could have potentially vetted them uh, among uh, one of uh, just from the top of my head uh, one of the people who uh, could have been stopped by this program is uh, a convicted terrorist uh, in, in egypt called um, ahmed abdul basit muhammad who came to the united states and applied for a political asylum and ICE arrested him in 2018 and uh, they attempted to deport him because of he confessed on his social media to his involvement in one of the most in the worst uh, terrorist attacks in Egypt's history he said in social media that he was among the organizers of the event and he glorified uh, the mass murderer who was killing people randomly at this event on his social media as well. This man is now granted asylum, living in the United States and working as a teacher, teaching in uh, the Rising Star Academy Cynthia, in New Jersey. 
thank you for this excellent overview of everything that's going on with the Brotherhood of the United States. I think it's been quite extensive, as you said, of course, political, economic, educational, and even penetrating the deepest levels of government. We do have some questions from the audience. Uh, first, starting off with this question. Why hasn't the Muslim Brotherhood been designated as a terrorist organization by the United States government? Well, I would love to know the answer to this question uh, because uh, it's, uh, uh, I believe uh, the reason is because of the infiltration, which is the topic of, 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 this, uh, of this event. It's because of the infiltration, the severe misinformation. When you look at uh, uh, think tanks like the Brookings Institute, for example, uh, they often provide uh, lawmakers with material and opinions and uh, papers and uh, research and all these topics. When you look at what they're putting out there, they're putting clear disinformation and actually wrong information about the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, so between bribery, uh, people who are in my field are often People often attempt to bribe them. I've been uh, offered millions of dollars not to do what I'm doing right now. So some people accept these briberies. Some people don't have enough information. And some people are card-carrying members of the Muslim Brotherhood. And they are very, very powerful. We have a uh, congressman, Ilan Omar, and Rashida Talib. Uh, these people would never have become uh, where they're at right now without the support of the Muslim Brotherhood. It's the deep infiltration that has hindered this effort. Right, so speaking about infiltration of governments besides the United States, which states or states have, have the Muslim Brotherhood been able to have the most success and impact? If you can give us one or two examples. I would say uh, the biggest example and the most important model actually is the Sudanese model. Uh, and as well as the Egyptian model, they both had their own versions of the explanatory memorandum. Uh, in 1991, uh, Egypt, uh, Egyptian security uh, forces discovered a document called Watika Tetemkin, which is the, 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 pro uh, the process of empowerment. It's translated to empowerment, but it's more, it's more accurately, you know, we could, it's more accurately described as domination. And it was almost identical to everything that was said in the explanatory memorandum. So this happened to Egypt. Uh, Egypt was ultimately subverted until the Muslim Brotherhood came to power in 2012. And they were later overthrown by the regime, by, by the military in 2013. But through these tactics of infiltrating the media, infiltrating Hollywood, which is the Muslim Brotherhood's doing right now, uh, infiltrating uh, uh, all, all these organs of society. Uh, Sudan is also a very important model and the same thing happened to them. It was the first country to be directly governed by the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, they also went through extensive uh, attacks, uh, clandestine attacks through subversion and infiltration the same way America is experiencing today until ultimately Omar al-Bashir, uh, the war criminal Omar al-Bashir uh, came to power uh, in 1989. And that was the first country to be governed by the Muslim Brotherhood using exactly the same tactic tactics they're using today in America. The Judicial Watch organization recently published an article entitled United States Government Funding of Islamist Charity Groups Triple Since 2016, which I actually think was based off of a lot of the research that was done by the Middle East Forum. Is this related and somehow extensive to the penetration by the Brotherhood of Government, uh, uh, the American government, whether it's their members, their allies, or as we say here, their useful infidels? Uh, what congressional leaders are aware of this? And what are they doing to attempt to stop this infiltration, both Congress and the Trump administration? Well, um, I, I am absolutely um, not optimistic at all. I'm very disturbed by, by how Congress is dealing with the Muslim Brotherhood uh, issue. 
uh, they have started uh, in, since 2015 uh, something called the Muslim Advocacy Day, where uh, they have uh, almost from 300 to 400 uh, uh, operatives uh, and Islamists roam the hallways of Congress, spreading their propaganda to lawmakers. Um, Cynthia, and, I want to stop you there for a second. You wrote a report on this a year or two ago, correct? Yes, and unfortunately, it's still very relevant because nothing has has happened. And th this is this is so crazy. It sounds like a crazy conspiracy theory. In this event, they have people who are associated with ISIS and Al Qaeda, members of the Muslim Brotherhood associated with Al ISIS and Al Qaeda lobbying your congressmen and pushing their own narrative. This is an insult to the victims of the Muslim Brotherhood and these terrorist groups. It's an insult to the US system of government. It's the insult to the US uh, laws. I, I, I can't imagine that this is what we're dealing with and I have reported it to numerous congressional offices and nothing has happened. Absolutely nothing happened. They still meet with them every right. every year since 2015. It has not stopped. So I let's, asked let's, for let's, an let's FBI investigation. In, yeah. let's, let's dig into that for a second, and maybe this will be our second to last question. Uh, many of our leading foreign policy experts, like the Council on Foreign Relations, um, Georgetown University has an article, not Georgetown University, but one of their, um, the Alawid Center for Islamic Studies, published an article debunking the exploratory memorandum as they, you know, debunking the exploratory memorandum. And there's been a lot of pushback, not just from people who are uh, on the dime of the uh, Muslim Brotherhood and their friends here in the United States, but people who I think academically actually believe that the Brotherhood's not a threat or not as great as a threat as others. How, how do you answer them? How do you answer these critics? Well, uh, I, they're, they're, uh, okay, this might not be very politically correct, but I, there are two types of people who speaks li who speak like like that. Either they have been bought, or they are completely misinformed and incompetent, uh, or they are card carrying members of the Muslim Brotherhood. And specifically, when it comes uh, to um, Professor John Esposito, he is uh, the embodiment of the Islamic uh, Brotherhood infiltration uh, of academia. Uh, I think he has, he has engaged in activities. Uh, I'm writing a book right now about the Brotherhood and I'm detailing some of the things that he has done and some of them border on illegal activity on behalf of the Muslim Brotherhood. And uh, one example of this is uh, in 2013, Mr. Esposito was engaged in uh, a founding event of a think tank, uh, a Muslim Brotherhood think tank in Qatar called Research Center for Islamic Legislation and Ethics. Uh, this center uh, had, uh, th the founding event for the center was attended by John Esposito and uh, Egyptian convicted terrorist and president of this organization, Ahmad al-Din Shaheen. It was attended by Hassan al-Banna's grandson, Tariq Ramadan, attended by convicted terrorist Brotherhood theologian, Al-Qaradawi, attended by the designated terrorist, Al-Raisuni, and uh, Osama bin Laden's friend, Hassan al-Turabi. I, I, I don't. That seems like a, a murderer's row of Islamists and their, and their supporters, if, if, it's, if you will. It's, it's, it's crazy. This is the same man who was sitting with Al Qaeda's allies and Al Qaeda's uh, leaders. Karadawi, by the way, was involved heavily with Al Qaeda. And just as a reminder, Esposito is a professor at Georgetown University. So if you can give us three policy recommendations to finish this interview with, and then if anyone in the audience has other questions, you can mail the uh, questions to us or leave them here. And we'll try to get back with Cynthia later on to get you a written answer. So Cynthia, three policy recommendations to finish the interview on how we can help push back against the civilization jihad operation. It has to be, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood has to be designated as a terrorist organization. Uh, there's absolutely no way around it. 
I believe uh, there need to be there needs to be a congressional uh, committee to investigate dedicated to the mission uh, of uh, the uh, civilization jihad operation and a congressional committee to investigate it and to investigate it's uh, how 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 bad things are in our intelligence community and uh, I believe uh, the third thing that we can do is educate the public. Every single law in, every single person who's involved in law enforcement in any way, every, every academic involved in the Middle East, every academic who's in, uh, involved in counterterrorism, they need to study this document. They need to treat the Muslim Brotherhood right now uh, as if we have, been, just like we have been treating the Soviet uh, Union during the Cold War. Uh, we are at war. The Muslim Brotherhood is at war with us. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not, that's our problem. But they are at war. The Muslim Brotherhood said, we are war. And Cynthia, I want to thank you very much for joining us today on the Middle East Forum webinar series. We've come to the close of today's webinar. Thank you all for joining us today. There'll be a short survey which will be available to fill out after you exit your Zoom window. We'll be sending out a weekly offering on Sunday of our webinars planned for next week. Uh, we also have a software Murawski as our next webinar scheduled for Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern time, speaking on why the left in America and around the world has turned on Israel. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful day. This is the end of our session. Cynthia, thank you again. Thank you very much.